Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Midweek Word. I'm excited that you decided to join in, and I am looking forward to having a good time this evening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this time that we get the fellowship. I ask you, Father God, that you would bring revelation knowledge to all of us, Lord God. Your word says that I am sharp and shining. Your word says, Lord God, that we should study to show ourselves approved, Lord God. We are studying. We are listening. We are here, Lord God, ready for your word to wash us, Lord God, to wash us. We are so grateful that you sent your son for us, Lord God. We're so grateful, Lord God, that we have your word to study, to learn, and depend on. We give you all the glory and all the honor for what you're about to teach us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, as you know, the last time that I had the opportunity to share with you, I shared one of the Beatitudes. Well, guess what? I have another Beatitude this afternoon. And the beatitude that I'm choosing to share today, uh, tonight, is blessed be the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yes, this was a wonderful um, study. Um, I hope you get as much out of it as I did. Well, let's dissect that. So first we say, blessed is the pure in heart. What do we think Jesus is talking about here? We know that on the Sermon of the Mount, that Jesus was giving um, his um, character references for um, kingdom living. He gave us eight things that we should be doing or things that we can incorporate in our lives that help us with kingdom living. And this one is blessed is the pure in heart. So when I looked at this blessing is pure in heart, I began to think about that. So we know that the word of God says that, you know what? Out of the heart is abundance, and that's how we carry ourselves. That's how we live. That's how we make our decisions, out of our heart. But we also know that other places in the Bible said that the heart can have um, wickedness in it, correct? So now, if this sentence says, blessed be the pure in heart, for they shall see God, I want to see God. But if he has written this, then that means that it is possible for me to have a pure heart. So my question to to myself when I read this, then God, then what is a pure heart? Obviously, he cannot be meaning that it is a sinless person. When we think of something as being pure, uh, righteous, we think that there's nothing wrong, that there is never a mistake, or that it's just pure, you know, kind of like a virgin, you know. Um, before she gets married, she's considered pure, but hey, uh, uh, if we look at some water that we say has been purified, we know that all the impurities has been taken out of that water and it's purified, clean. So does that mean that me as a Christian, that I have to be 100% um, sinless? Well, we know there was only one sinless person and that was the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. So let's dig a little deeper. So first I had to look at, okay, purity. How do we get something purified? You know, if it's going to be pure, the pure at heart, then that must mean that it needs to be purified. That leads me to believe that this is a process. So let's see what happens when we purify things that's in the natural. For instance, sugar is refined. It is purified. It changes form. A good example would be gold. You know, when you have gold, when they get it from the gold and they get it from mining, they have to take that gold and it has all of these impurities in it, things that don't belong, things that are not gold. So they heat it up and after they heat it and it goes through the refining process, then you get the impurities, the things that polluted, the things that was bad, the things that's not gold. And they separate it till we get to the pure gold. So all the impurities has been taken out of it. We can look at the same thing when we look at our lives with Christ. Hey, there is worldly things that we've been taught, that we listen to, that we hear, and we have impurities within us. But as we go through the process of sanctification, then we begin to get refined. We begin to, all those impurities, all those things that has polluted our minds and our thought, as we read and study the word of God, we begin to see something different. And we begin to get purified. The word of God says that he will give us a undivided heart. That he will make our hearts one. 
So in this first sentence, we have blessed is the pure. So we know that there's a process that needs to go through to be purified. And then we also say that they pure in heart. So that means the heart is very important. So you know, when we say that we see Christians and they come into church and they're having a good time and they seem to be on point and doing everything that we expect them to do as Christians, that's great. But the thing is, Jesus, God, wants your heart. So it's deeper than the surface. It is, he needs your heart. What kind of heart? He needs a pure heart. So then, what is a pure heart? Well, I came up with two things. One, a pure heart is a heart that is undivided, number one, and a heart that is clean. So what do you mean by undivided? Well, I mean that that heart cannot be looking two ways. It can't have the world and God. When we get ready to worship God, when we get ready to give our all in all to him, we cannot bring the world with us. We have to put those worldly things down and become pure and get rid of all those sinful natures. What we were before we received the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he gave us a new heart, we have to leave those things behind. We can't turn around and take on those things and say, okay, an example. We go to church, we do everything right, we, we went to Bible study, we went to praise and worship. These are all the things we did for God. But the question is, did you spend time with God? We need to be proportionate to say we do things for God, but we also need to spend time with God. Because as we spend time with God, he will wash us with his word. He will wash us as we pray. He will teach us and show us. And as we draw near and close to him, as James said in James 4, as we get closer to him, guess what? We begin to see him. Because he said, blessed is the pure in heart, for they shall see God. As we draw closer to him, we begin to see the works and the things that God is doing in our lives right here in the suite right now, not in the by and by. See, the Beatitudes were things that he's given us for living here on earth. So if it says, blessed is the pure in heart, for there shall see God, I want to see God working in my life right now. That makes me stronger. That makes me a better person. We can't have a divided heart. All the impurities in us, all the things that we were doing before we got saved. You know, once you go and you get saved, it's a lot that you don't know. So you have to go through the process of sanctification. That process of sanctification is your purifying process. That's the process where God begins to show you things and you begin to drop off those things that are impure and the pollution begins to come out of you. We're here living in this world. It is so easy for the heart of man to get twisted and get confused with all the world view and all the opinions that's going on. How do we block out the noise? How do we get to what's real and what God has for us in the plans we have? It's through our process of sanctification. Now, Jesus died on the cross for us. Yes. So with that being said, we are justified through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. But that sanctification process, I have several scriptures that I can show you here that says we are supposed to be proactive in our sanctification. You find a Christian that has been a Christian for 10 or 12 years. And you get someone that maybe just been a Christian for two years. And you see the difference in the level of growth. What's the difference? The difference is one is probably emerging themselves in the things of God, putting themselves in their place for sanctification. If you just go along your merry way and just do everything that someone said, you didn't study, you didn't read, you didn't research, you didn't emerge yourself in the things of God, your growth will be stunning. God is, Jesus is telling us here, blessed is the pure in heart. That is that heart that's undivided. That heart that's putting down the world, choosing to follow him, and not coming to God, trying to worship him with other idols. The question becomes, what are your idols? You know, they haven't, these idols that they had back in biblical days, they've just changed forms. 
That idol could be what it could be obsessing with a particular person. That idol could be I still want to get in the alcohol, you know, because I still have to have my drink. And I don't mean somebody's just taking a little sip. I'm just talking about someone that's overindulging where you know you need to give it up. The Holy Spirit is telling you, but you don't. You know, that could be that spirit of just lying, you know. Whatever it is that you are coming to God with and you know as you're with him and spending time with him that you're supposed to put it down. That is an idol in your life. That is an idol. So a pure heart is one that's um, not divided, that is totally devoted and committed to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, committed to God and the works of the ministry, none divided, not two ways. You know, James said that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you're double-minded, you know, hey, today I'm going to do this because it's just a little white lie. Or uh, today I'm going to go out and, um, you know, be seductive or wear things I shouldn't be wearing or, or scream and yell at people that I'm not supposed to be screaming and yelling at, but God forgive me, but, oh, I was just mad, so I was able to get away. No, 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 no. We have to um, decide that we're going to walk with the Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we cannot be double-minded. We cannot be double-minded. So two things to, that we can remember that when you're talking about being pure in heart, one is not having an undivided heart. Our hearts need to be solely out for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul said, this one thing that I do, this one thing that I do, and that is not looking behind, but looking forward and pressing forward to the higher goal. So we are supposed to get involved with our sanctification. And um, here's some scriptures. So God is calling us to be proactive. James 4, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Clean your hands, ye sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. It is telling you to draw nigh. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us clean ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It's telling you to do this. First Peter 1 and 22. Seeing you have purified yourself, seeing you have purified yourself, and obeying the truth through the spirit until unformed love of the brother. See that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. 1 John 3 and 3. And every man that has his hopes in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. I know these are things that we cannot do ourselves. But we have to make an effort and we have to seek and we have to run out and we have to labor and we have to strive toward it. And when we go start knocking, seeking, and looking, then the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, will open up the doors and will help us. And as we emerge ourselves in prayer and in singing and in praise and worship and work with him, he will clean us of all these unrighteousness. And then we get that pure heart. Let's look at a clean heart. So we have one, a pure heart is an undivided heart. In other words, we're not bringing idols along with us trying to um, stay in the world, one foot in, one foot out, you know, um, cold or hot. We have to choose. We're going to be cold or hot, whichever one we're going to be. And then it has to be an undivided heart, totally devoted to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, putting him first in everything that we do, first on our jobs, First, when we get up, first, when we get ready to eat our meals, first in everything, he has to be first in it. That's, it doesn't mean um, that things are not going to be tugging at our hearts. You know, when we get in relationships with people and we're living in this world and there's things that we have to do and take care of, but we still have to maintain a balance and a portion to make sure that the wrong things in our lives don't step in front of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that we're not putting him on the back burner. He has to be first. He has to be a number one. We know from setting our word, all of you that study it knows that we have a jealous God. He's not going to take on our idols. He said, blessed are those who are pure shall see God. 
as you get closer to God, as you start studying his word, as you start being immersed in it, and then you begin to hear him, then you begin to see him, and then he begin to lead you and guide you every day into all truth. So the next thing we have is a clean heart. I want to talk about that clean heart. That clean heart is what we get as we study the word and as we start um, washing our hearts clean um, with the word of God. And there's one other point that I want to bring up to let you know about, which is refining. Yes, yes, yes. And then where is it? I'm going to bring it up right quick. For he has founded upon the seas, established upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. Here in these scriptures in Psalms, when we read and study a little farther, Psalms is telling us that we have to react and be a certain way so that we can also see God, that we are responsible. For, for being a certain way so, and acting a certain way and carrying ourselves a certain way so that not being in vain or not being vanity and that we are not supposed to be deceitful against our brothers. That is the second part. We have no undivided heart toward the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then we also don't be deceitful towards our brothers and sisters and that we love them fervently. So in order for us to be pure in heart and see God. Guess what? We cannot have an undivided heart and we need a clean heart, a heart that seeks and search for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look, we can work all day for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we have to have it in proportion to spending time with him so that we can hear him and see him. I hope this word has blessed you as it has blessed me. I look forward to talking to you the next time.